Hello. Welcome to how to build your own network storage server. Not only that, I introduce how to access remotely using public IP address or dynamic domain name. In addition, you can also access the internal network remotely using this network storage server. In this case, I use three hard drives, one solid state hard drive and two traditional hard drives. The solid state hard drive to install the operating system. Two traditional hard drives to store data. Next is choosing a suitable operating system. I use TrueNest Scale to build the network storage server. You go to the home page and download the installer for this open source operating system. This is a completely free solution. After downloading the installer, you use a software to write the image file to your USB drive. The software is called Rufus. This software helps you create a bootable TrueNest Scale installer. You connect the USB drive to your computer. On the Rufus software, you select the USB drive, then browse to the installer you downloaded in the previous step. After a few minutes of waiting, you will have a bootable TrueNest Scale installer. Next are the steps to install the operating system on the target computer. You connect the USB drive to the target computer. On the target computer, you access the motherboard management page. On the motherboard management page, you change the boot order. You set the computer to boot from the USB drive. Each manufacturer has a different management interface, but the settings are almost the same. You select the hard drive you want to install the operating system on. You can install the operating system on any hard drive. But I recommend you install True NAS on a solid state drive for optimal performance. Then you follow the steps above. The installer will erase the old data on the hard drive so it will give a warning. You are asked to create a new password. This is the password used to access over the network using the browser. If you use a password that is too complicated, write it down because it will be used in the next steps. After you finish, you disconnect the USB drive from the target computer and restart the computer. You make sure your computer boots from the solid state drive. This is the drive that has just installed the operating system. You wait a while until the screen appears the server's IP address. You use this IP address to access over the internal network. Next, I use another computer to access the server over the network. You use any browser to access the server management page using the IP address. You are asked to enter the administrator password set in the previous step to log in. I hope you still remember the password you created in the previous step. Before going to the sharing settings, I set the time zone. The time zone affects some settings so I recommend you should set it up first. Next I create a new account. You can manage accounts by group if you want. I don't want to use the admin account to access shared resources. That would be unsafe. So I create a new account and use it to access shared resources in the next steps. Next I set up storage on the server. 
On this server I use two traditional hard drives of the same size to store data. To avoid the risk of data loss I use two-way mirror storage. If one of the two traditional hard drives fails your data is still safe. This way is safe for your data but requires more hard drives. Also the server supports more ways to protect your data. But those ways require more hard drives. With only two hard drives I use the above setup. On the two traditional hard drives I create a new folder. Then I enable the sharing service. I have finished creating the folder shared folder. Next, I allow the account that was just created in the previous step to have access to this shared folder. In addition to the administrative accounts that can access the folder, I add the account that was just created in the previous step. You can add or remove accounts if you want. Or you can manage access rights by group. These are the steps to build a network storage server. You can access shared folders over the local network. I will access the shared folder over the network to check the result. I upload or download the file. Thus, the account has read and write rights to the shared folder. To access the shared resource remotely, you follow these steps. I will introduce how to access the shared resource via public IP address. The last part I will introduce how to access using dynamic domain name. I set up a static IP address for the network storage server. I set up a static IP address to configure port forwarding. You assign a static IP address in your subnet. Next you set up the gateway address and the domain name resolution address. You set up everything as above to ensure the server has an internet connection. You write down the name of the network interface to set up the virtual private network server. Virtual private network helps clients access the server remotely. To build a virtual private network, I use WireGuard. WireGuard helps me build a virtual private network server easily and at high speed.
By default, the application uses the server's internal IP address. You use the public IP address replace the default setting. Clients connect to the server using this public IP address. Next, you create a new GUI login password. This password is used to log into the VPN application via the GUI. Don't forget to update the network interface name mentioned in the previous step. This is the network interface name on your server. Thus, the VPN server has been successfully deployed. Next, you create new configuration files for the clients. You access the VPN application using the password created in the previous step. On this interface, you manage the clients. You add, delete or disable clients. I add a new client. You can connect using a QR code if using a phone or you download the configuration file if using a computer. Because my network storage server is in the internal network behind the router, I forward the port on the router. If you assign a public IP address to the file storage server, skip this step. You access the router management page and forward the port to the VPN server. You can change the default port to ensure security if you want. In this case I forward the default port of this VPN service. Depending on the router manufacturer, there will be different port forwarding interfaces. You just need to make sure to forward the correct port to the IP address of the network storage server. After completing the steps to set up the VPN server above, I use a computer to establish the connection. Don't forget to send the configuration file created in the previous step to the client. I recommend that each client has a different configuration file. This computer uses a different public IP address from the network storage server. You download the software for the client. After completing the installation, you add the configuration file. Next, you establish the VPN connection. If you see traffic, it means the connection is successful. I will access the shared folder to check the result. You can access using the IP address of the virtual private network. Or you can use a local IP address if you want. You can change the subnet of the virtual private network if you want. As you can see with a virtual private network you can access shared resources on a remote network host. Not only that you can also access the internal network using this virtual private network. As mentioned in the last part I will introduce how to set up a dynamic domain name. Why use a dynamic domain name service? Using a dynamic domain name to overcome the disadvantages of a dynamic public IP address. 
the public IP address changes causing a disconnection between the client and the server. I use a dynamic domain name service called DuckDNS. I create a new free domain name. After having a free domain name, I add a new application on the server. This application is responsible for updating the public IP address for you. This application can update the public IP address for many different dynamic domain name services. I add my new dynamic domain name service in the list. After then enter my domain name and secret key. The application will automatically detect the new public IP address and update it. That is how to overcome the disadvantages of dynamic public IP address. Instead of using public IP address as before, I set up domain name on virtual private network server. I use domain name of dynamic domain name service instead of public IP address. Next I create a new configuration file for the client. This configuration file uses domain name instead of public IP address. These are the steps to build a network storage server from scratch. And how to build a virtual private network to access shared resources remotely. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Good luck. On the client computer I add a new configuration file using domain name. Like last time I access the shared folder. As you can see everything works fine. You can access the server using phone if you want. After installing the application on your phone you use QR code to add the file configure and create connection. On this computer I use Network Diagnostic Tool to test the connection between client and server when using virtual private network. As you can see you can use IP address or domain name both have successful connection to server.